So let's do a little application of multiplying and factoring polynomials. So we need a little bit of uh, background information before we get into our application problem. And this is dealing with specific types of area problems called area of a shaded region. Okay, so if you want to find the area of any shape that has a hole in it, which is what we call the shaded region, you're going to find the area of the shape, you're separately going to find the area of the hole, and then you're going to subtract off the area of that hole from the shape. So let me show you a quick example of what I mean. If this was a rectangle, I think um, most people would be able to say that if this was a rectangle uh, with a width of 4 and a length of 3, that if I multiply these together on the inside, I would have an area of 12. Okay. So if I took another shape and I decided I wanted to cut a hole into this rectangle, and let's say right over here I decide I'm going to cut a hole, right? and I'm saying that that's a square, and the area of that square, right? if I know that one of the sides is, say, 2, I would say, well, this is a 2 by 2 square, which means inside of this space is 4. So it looks like what I really did was I took the whole area of 12, and I cut a little hole in it, which is 4, which means that's no longer a part of the area, so I'm going to subtract that away. And I'd say that the remaining space left from the big rectangle is just 8 square units. Okay? So that, this is the basic idea of what we call a shaded region problem. Typically what they'll do is all of the space that they want you to keep, they're going to color in and they're going to call this the shaded region. Okay? And the hole will be referred to, obviously, as just a hole. Okay, so we're going to find the area of the big space, find the area of the hole, and when we do a subtraction problem with those, that's going to give us the area of the shaded region. So we're going to apply this to what we know about multiplying and factor. Okay, so our problem over here looks like we're looking at another square. Okay, it's a square, and they tell us that the side of the square has length 3r, okay, and we, we're cutting a circle into this which has a radius of just r. Okay? So if I asked you to find the area of the square, well, we know to find the area of squares and rectangles, you just multiply length times width, and in squares, these are all 3r, all the way around. Okay? So I can just take 3r times 3r, and that's going to be the area. So I'm going to say that area here is equal to, well, 3r times 3r, and so we're going to have to go back and use our exponent rules. It looks like 3 times 3 gives me 9. r to the first times r to the first gives me r to the second. So I'm going to say the area of the square is 9r to the second units, square units. Okay? And so with the, the circle, you would need to look up a formula if you don't know it. The area of a circle, we say, is pi r squared. Okay? So I can draw a little bit of pi there. Okay? Pi r squared. And in this case, the uh, radius is just called r, so I don't really need to substitute anything. I already have an r in that spot. So I'm really just going to use this formula to represent the area of the circle. This is the hole that I've cut. Okay? So now I have a, an expression that represents the area of the square, 9r squared, and the area of the circle, pi r squared. If I wanted to find the area of the shaded region, I am going to take the 9r squared, and I'm going to subtract away pi r squared. So I'm going to say third part, area of the shaded region, is 9r squared, which is the area of the square, minus pi r squared, which is the area of the whole. And this expression represents the area of what's left over in the shaded region. Okay? So part D is asking us to write this expression, 9r squared plus pi r squared, in factored form which means if there are any common factors in either of these expressions, or in both of these expressions, we need to remove it. So if I'm taking a look, I see in this first one that there's an r squared, and I see in the second one there's also an r squared. So I'm going to remove that common expression, and I'm going to say that I can rewrite this as r squared times 9 minus pi. Okay? And I'm saying that's true, again, because if I were to distribute r squared, I would say r squared times 9, well, that's 9r squared. r squared times pi, well, that's pi r squared. And so this is the factored form of my area of a shaded region. So we're going to look at one more example of uh, shaded region problems with the area. Okay, so this example says you are painting a rectangular wall with a length 5x squared feet 
and a width of 12x feet. There are, uh, is a rectangular door that measures x by 2x that we're not going to paint. And they want to know how much of the wall is going to be painted, and they want our answer here in factor form. So this is very similar to the last one. If you take a look at a picture, this would be the wall, and obviously we have a little door here. So it looks like we're going to paint the entire rectangle here, except for some small hole. So if I'm going to label the information they said, they said that the wall itself is 5x squared feet, and the width is 12x feet. Okay, And I can do the same thing with the door. Say this one is x by 2x. Okay. So I can enter that information, and I'm going to go and find the area of each of them separately. So the area of the wall, which I'm going to write as area, a little wall down here, would be just length times width, which for us would be 5x squared times 12x squared. I'm sorry, just times 12x. So I can multiply 5 times 12, and that's going to give me a 60. And I'm going to use my exponent rules to say x squared times x to the first gives me x to the third. So I'm going to say that the area of the wall, which includes the door, is going to be 60x cubed, and we, the units are feet squared. Okay, square feet. Okay, so if I want to find the area of the door so I can take that away, which I'm going to write as area door, I'm going to multiply together 2x and x. Well, 2x times x looks like 2x squared. All right, so it looks like I have a an area for the door of 2x squared, and again, unit is square feet. So if we want to include units. Okay? To find the area of what we're going to paint, it looks like we're going to take the area of the wall and we're going to subtract away the area of the door. And what's left over is what we would call this pink shaded region. That's what we're going to paint. So if I plug in these expressions, I know 60x cubed minus uh, 2x squared would be an expression that represents the shaded region. And they asked for this in factored form. So again, we need to go back to what we know about factoring. Well, I'm going to look for a common factor between 60 and 2. Well, the only factors for 2 are just 2 and 1. So I'm going to say the biggest number that is a shared factor is 2. Okay. And when I look at my variables, it looks like one has an exponent of 3, the other has an exponent of 2. And if you remember from that, we said we can only really take as many as whatever the smallest one is. I can't take more than 2 from here. So I'm going to say that my GCF here is 2x squared. Now I'm going to open up my parentheses and try to rebuild this expression. Well, 2x squared times what gives me 60x cubed? 2 times 30 will give me 60. I have two x's on the outside. I need there to be three total, which means I need that last x to be on the inside. Okay, And this is a little bit of a tricky one that you need to be careful about. We, have, we do need a, a number here. I pulled away the whole 2x squared from that last expression, but I do need a placeholder in this spot that's going to represent something that I can multiply the 2x squared by to get this back. And in this case, the answer to that is 1. Okay, so I'm going to say 2x squared times 1 will give me this back. So I'm going to say in factored form, 2x squared times 30x minus 1 represents the area of the shaded region. So this will be my final answer here okay, in factored form.